with how Drake has progressed over the last, you know, really, I guess, year and a half now, where is the spot where you maybe see him take the biggest leap and the biggest progress? In that? Yeah, I mean, with, you know, with any young player, when you're talking about Drake, it's every game, right, matters because of the experience. You know, playing against different techniques um, that he's facing from defensive backs, uh, finding his way to win versus certain leverages. But ultimately, it, it's for every position for a young player. Right? Every rep matters in terms of experience. Some are great experiences, some are okay, and some are not. But ultimately, it's where you can grow from. And that's what he, you know, every day, goes out there with a certain attitude, a certain standard, um, trying to get on from a timing standpoint, everything else with all the quarterbacks. And um, again, you can see it out there, and there's a, there's a confidence, and there's a trust. With, you mentioned leverage and, and how he uses that. I'm guessing that that's part of why he's good in contested situations. Huh. Is that yeah, I mean, I think it's, look, I think that's, that's a little mom, dad, and God, right? You're born with a little bit of the ability to spatial awareness, um, on contact, being able to still keep focus. I think that's what happens some guys at the wide receiver or just the, the receiver standpoint of when you're catching a ball is you get knocked off track, right? And all of a sudden your vision. But he has the ability to maintain that, obviously focusing on the football and coming down with it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's obviously a bigger body, a guy who understands how his body works and then understands when the ball's in the air, right, how to judge it. I think that ultimately, right, matters the most with the quarterback's ability to give him a chance. Right, and understand what type of ball is needed depending upon the leverage. Is that, I mean, is that something, like you said, on um, that God, like that? Is, that? is that something that can be taught, or is that you kind of have it or you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's something, I think spatial awareness is, is more than likely you have it or you don't. But there's, there are some, like some guys haven't maybe found it yet that still have it in their body. But ultimately, right, he's played other sports, multi sport guy, um, like a lot of our players. and you're able to cross, right, from things that you learn from other sports, if it's boxing out or how to run the lane in a fast break and you feel that space, and ultimately you bring that into your other sport and you can see those transitions happening. A little basketball reference there for you, right? Wow. Running the lanes, yeah, everything. I feel like I'm talking about my daughter and my wife. You know, Arthur, well, yeah, I guess you've got that down in the background. But Arthur, Arthur also talks a lot of basketball references. Do y'all watch basketball in the offseason? Yeah, look, I, I'm league? a huge – I'm a huge college basketball NBA fan. Probably, a, you know, when I was in college, I was a huge college basketball fan, right? And then um, as my school hasn't done as well in college basketball, I transitioned more to the NBA. But, um, but ultimately, right, we're on, we're on our way back here at Louisville. But, um, but yeah, I, look, I grew up playing a ton of it, grew up in the AAU circuit, playing a lot of it. Um, a lot of good buddies of mine, um, played either in college or a couple into the um, professional leagues. And my father-in-law is a pro basketball coach. Um, Art and I have always talked about, all the way going back to when we first met each other, um, you know, we would play pickup basketball and then we'd go watch whatever game was on um, at that time. And you have a great appreciation for the athleticism, the intelligence, the spacing, um, everything that goes into like really watching great offense and and whether college or the NBA. College is different, right? A little more zones, right? But ultimately, you get to see guys, like I love watching great point guards, regardless of age, right? They can see it like a quarterback right before it happens. And then ultimately, they make their players around them better, right? But it only happens if there's space and people are at the right place at the right time. A lot about like playing quarterback. So there are some of those, I guess, properties that do, you know, they're transitive. They do come over they do translate um, and I think when you look at that sport in particular right it does take I know there's one basketball and you can go one on one but the beautiful offense is move the ball you never know who's going to take the shot the ball's constantly moving putting the defense in constant predicaments just like really good NFL offenses right you don't know where the ball's going to go you don't know where it's going to stop you have to defend the whole field you're in the right place at the right time. So when that ball is thrown on time or that pass is delivered, um, good things typically happen. And everybody's in sync, right? And you get production that way. You all still play pickup? Look, I promised myself, right, I'm not going to age myself here. You guys, I'm sure you can look it up. 
I told myself around mid 30s, I was done playing pickup. Reason being is I wanted to play one on one with my kids until my older two decided to start beating me one on one. So I've completely retired the whole basketball. Now I'm just. Where's, a, that's not, where's your competitive? What's the, yeah, competitive is not ending up next door at the orthopedic and spine <laughs> um, center here at Emory. Um, look, yeah, I know when to say when. I like to do play horse, shoot around, give some tips, maybe throw an elbow to my, my daughter or my son as they're going down low, but yeah, that, that's past me at this point. Do you have a competitive juices outlet that you still do? do you do pickle? I mean, you haven't gone to pickleball. You're not I don't know. I've not done that. I've tried it one time. Um, golf is really. That's true. But again, that's, you pick up your sticks for just a few. I mean, I haven't picked them up since July, right? So that, that was part of it for sure. The basketball was always the outlet. It was. I mean, it was a sport I grew up love and I loved. Um, played all the way through high school. Had a, you know, a chance maybe to play in college, but it was the reason why it was great is because you can go and play pick up with a couple of buddies, and you can play for a couple hours and get great exercise, but then you can still be competitive, right? Now, if I think about that, I'm like hip, ankle, Achilles. I'm like, no, man, there's no way, you know. But I always promise promised myself I would find a way to, to stay interactive with my children. And that was, that's an outlet still for him, but no. No, I get embarrassed now when I play him one-on-one, -on -one, so it's, it's not even a, a contest anymore, which is sad to say, actually. You play on the AU circuit. Who's the best IU player? Oof, gosh. So we're going to go St. Ed's. We're going to go Cleveland here. Oh, okay. Steve, Steve oh. Logan was a teammate of mine, okay, AAU basketball. Sam Clancy was the other on that same team. Father played in the NFL for a long time. Great rebounder at Pitt. Yeah. Um, and then there was uh, another player, Steve Lepore. Three Division One players on our rival high school. We all played AAU together. Um, needless to say, you know, I was more of a facilitator with those three guys. But um, look, there was great high school basketball in Ohio in general at that time. Um, yeah, I was here. Here's my game in a nutshell. I know we're away from football, but you got me going. So left, yeah, that's for another press conference. So right, I'm a lefty, which is non-traditional, right? Because most people are righty, especially when they play basketball. Look, I couldn't go right. I only went left. So if I was gonna get inside the three-point line, I was going right to the basket. I had no mid-range, couldn't stop, couldn't shoot like that, but I could spot shoot. So. If you can kick it outside the three-point line, like I'm gonna gun it, or I'm gonna go right to the basket. It was all the way there or stop. There was no mid-range, nothing else. I just happened to marry someone who had an unbelievable mid-range jump shot. So I was like, that, that was opposite to tracked, obviously. But um, yeah, that's that in a nutshell, right? That's my scout. You want a scouting port on me? That's exactly it. Make him go right. If he goes to the basket, he's going all the way, out of control, shoulders down, like has no idea, or he's going to spot up and shoot a three with not no jumping, no jumping, stand still. Better athletes, NBA or NFL players? Yeah, you're not going to get me to say that. I look, <laughs> I think they're both phenomenal. I think look, there's some phenomenal athletes. Here, here's the one thing I will say. Some of the this is this personally on my teams, either in college or pro. Some of the best athletes that I played with couldn't dribble. Wow. They're just like, just not, and some of the okay athletes in the football team were unbelievable basketball players, mm -hmm. right? So I don't think that carries over. Um, but look, I mean, you look at the NBA right now, I mean, it's, it's pace, right? It's pace, it's space, it's seven foot plus guys stretching the floor. Um, what you don't see, what I miss, right? And this, I'm going to age myself again. Back to the That's right. Akeem Olajuwon, Patrick Ewing, David Robinson, Tim Duncan, Right? I'm going to miss a couple guys, obviously. That I'm saying the fundamentals of putting your back to the basket and then working your feet, right? Drop step, pump fake, right? All of those things that now in the NBA, I, I mean, it's almost, I, I don't say it exists, right? But that was, you throw it down low. If they doubled it, they kicked it back out. Yeah. But, but that was the, the, the NBA, right? Like you, and then if you went to the basket back then, like, you're going to use all six fouls. And they were going to make you, like, earn it going to the basket. Um, the rules have changed, right? I, I get all that. The rules have changed in a lot of sports. Um, but there was, a, there was a beauty to the fundamentals, 
of that type of now guys are unbelievable now the range is unbelievable it's fun to watch everything else like i live on the aau circuit in the summer right i know it's girls instead of boys but but ultimately like you see it right you see it now go to the girls game like there's girls you know pulling 30 footers and when i was a kid like you get yanked out of the game for that now it's like hey you're open shoot that one again right and I'm not I'm not saying that's bad i'm just saying it's different right the great Ali Luck was a great right. two guard. Was he? Well, yeah, he was dope. Yeah. Saint Nation's Marty pride Chambers. right there, right? Yeah. Andrew's yeah. father. Yeah. Yeah. Marty Chambers. Yeah. Marty yeah. Chambers. Yeah. Golly, yeah. look at you. Was, uh, I mean, this is one of the better <laughs> things we've had in three you, years, man. man right? Too. Golly. Yeah. All right. Hey, I got football. Let's go. Thanks, guys. I'll be out. Hey, this is my colonist, Ken. Um, Gary, he wanted to know: Can you ask for going? What they're trying to do to help Desmond? with throws that he misses, mm -hmm. like the one to Hodge off the plea flicker mm -hmm. at the start of the game or the crossing route to Hollins? Mm -hmm. Good questions, right? Really are. Um, by the way, right, a little creativity and first drive. It's for the first drive question didn't come yeah. out, right? <laughs> Trying something new. Um, look, I think that's a really good question because even in practice it happens, right? If we miss something, right, that's based off either a fundamental or we didn't see it, we like to get the throw after. Um, so. It's hard to mimic exactly, obviously, um, what just occurred. But if it's a throw outside the numbers, right, we're going we're gonna to emphasize that. If it's a crossing route where we missed the guy because he stayed on the move, right, we're going to get that in some form of individual. Um, but you're constantly tinkering with your, what we do out there, right? It might be, hey, we're working a play action throw today. It's heavy in the plan. Let's make sure we get that. Or on Wednesday's practice, and today is Thursday, hey, we missed that throw outside the numbers. Ball placement must be a little further outside to your left. Let's go ahead and work those drops. Um, but yeah, that's that's part of how we, at least for myself, I should say, that's part of how I create the individual for the quarterback is things that we need to improve on, or things that are heavy into the game plan. So is that more something where you go like day by day, where you're kind of maybe building the absolutely? There's fun like week to week. Yeah, I think that's a good question. There's fundamental things that we start each day with. You'll see. I mean, you guys see it. Right, there's things that are just base fundamentals that I would literally do uh, with my 14-year-old, um, where it's you rely on them; they're your foundation. That's why they're called your fundamentals. And then, right, you branch off into the um, outliers of potentially the, the plan, and then or right things that we need to improve on from the, the past week. And then you kind of build uh, the players up, uh, the individuals up from there. And. Um Coach, what would be some of the keys, uh, you know, you, you, the, for the run game, getting the run game going, uh, they're seventh through tenth. Um, everybody's been crowding the line. Of yeah, I think we're close. I mean, you've seen us now for the last really year, you know, year and six games. Um, we understand that people are coming up. There's a lot of guys in the box. Um, you know, we give credit to our, our players of identifying um, a lot of those structures. Uh, I think the coaches do a great job of uh, giving our players a, put in the best position to understand what defense we're trying to do. Um, but ultimately, right, we, you know, we look at ourselves, we understand how teams are trying to play us. Um, but we think we're, you know, we think we're close. And we're going to continue to rely on the fundamentals and we're going to continue to, to believe in what we believe and, and go out there and play with great energy. Energy used in this press conference again, Rostein. Energy, right? Um, and, you know, continue to, uh, to rely on our fundamentals. When it comes to the weekly duties of a starting quarterback outside of like, you know, practice, I'm thinking of the Tuesday meeting that Des leads. How much of that did y'all have to coach into him at this level and how much of that did he sort of innately understand? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's one question where I've been, you know, I've been fortunate to be in this league a, a decent amount of years. I've been around different starting quarterbacks, either a player or as a coach. I think each guy has their own innate organic way of leading. Not just their players, that the skilled players, but everybody on the offense. And you can offer suggestions, right? Been around so-and-so, he did this. But what I felt, at least personally, when you do that is you can't be somebody else, right? You might have said why that worked for somebody else, but ultimately you have to be, believe in what you believe and lead the way you want to believe. And so that to me is however Des feels, right? Those are the best ways to bring his guys together, get on the same page, talk the same language, see the same stuff. Right? We encourage that, ultimately. It's more of an encouragement than a direction. And, um, and again, you have to be 
authentic. I've seen guys, not to name names, I've seen guys literally try to be someone else because they heard someone else did it and it was successful. Just like I've seen guys change their mechanics based off who they're watching on film. I mean, that's a, that's a hard road now because that's not, you're trying to mimic something that's not natural to you. And it's the same way about leadership. You try to be someone that you're not, lead like, like someone that you're not, regardless if it's great intentions or not, usually those are not, those are failures of outcomes. What are some things you can do in preparation this week and practice this week to sort of thwart those um, road struggles we all have? Yeah, I, I think for us, right, regardless, here, here, you go on the road in the NFL, right, you look back and our three years here, right? It's been kind of like in 21, right? We were a road team, right? 22, we started to, to manage our way back into the home, and obviously this year. What, what are the issues on the road, right? A, you're leaving your home environment, get on a plane, right? You fly somewhere and you go to a hotel, you wake up the next day, right? Okay, and then you go play in an environment that typically relies on nonverbal communication at times, right? Silent counts. Okay, huddles loud. And so mimicking those things, right, we'll do things to train our guys. But ultimately, right, it's allowing our guys to go in there, right, understand the plan, be clear and concise, erase any doubt because they know what we're supposed to do inside and out, and they go out there and play fast. And know, right, that ultimately the advantage at times is going to be to the defense because they can knock out some of our communication by the crowd noise or whatever. But for us, right, it's, it goes back to the same thing I've been saying over and over. If you understand what you're supposed to do, you have no doubt, you can play fast, and you rely on your fundamentals, it doesn't matter if you're in Mercedes or you're down in Tampa. Those carry. The minute that you're not doing one of those things, right, you have a little bit of doubt, you're not relying on your fundamentals, regardless if you're at home or you're away, you're going you're gonna to run into some issues. And with the, the news of the flag football in the Olympics, Desmond said he was thinking about his daughter potentially playing it in when she grows up. Um, is that something that crossed your mind with your own family? All right, this is, where, this is where the sad state of a coach comes in. I have no idea what the flag football deal you guys are talking about. Like, I live in literally a Cancun up there. So what is yeah. what is it? Um, I think it's like in five years there's going to be flag okay. football in the Olympics. In the Olympics. Yeah. Is it is co-ed? Or is men? See how ignorant that question. Right. So it's man, men and women, co or flag football. <laughs> not, not together. Not together. Gotcha. Well, how, like seven on seven? Five on five. Five on five. Huh. That's two seven Yeah. I well, forget basketball for a second. I might come back a little bit, right? I. Well, yeah. What are the rules on that? Parents grew up there, so I guess I would. Yeah, but you know, there are a lot of great Italian quarterbacks that came out. You got Marino, right? You got Montana. I'm guessing a little bit of Italian with the vowel at the end. Um, Pascarini. I mean, there's you go down the list. I'm missing a bunch of them. I, that'd be a struggle. You're the Italian flag football team? Is that what you're saying? Anyway? I'm thinking like I might just be the water guy, right? Just to making sure that uh, those guys are they're hydrated. Yeah, that's cool. That's again, what, why is it cool? I just heard that obviously is because. Um, it's bringing the game worldwide, even though it's not exactly tackle football, but it's, it's the love of why I do what I do and a lot of us do what we do, is the passion you have for the, the game of football. And regardless if it's flag that my child plays or it's tackle that my other child plays, um, still a great, great, great game regardless of, of that. Man, I got, I'm gonna go work out right now. <laughs> Your daughter plays any flag, did you say? No, they try to get her to. Okay, she's a hooper all the way. Yeah, she was like, uh, she tried to throw. I said, we're good. Let's go work on your jump shot. Do you think Caitlin Clark fan at all? Uh, she is a huge college basketball fan, right? She's, um, yeah, she, she falls it all. And she's, uh, it's, a, it's a great product. They do a phenomenal job at the WNBA championship. I do know that was last night, right? Um, my daughter keeps me updated and all that stuff. and. Yeah, just kind of part of our family my, with my wife and my daughter. Doing good. Uh, excited for this week of practice. Already had one good day of practice. Um, just to go back, rehash the Washington game. Guys played hard, but it's unfortunate that we give up a big return, which led to seven points. We never want to put our defense 
in that type of field position. Um, our defense has been playing well, and we can't allow them to have a short field. So it starts with myself making sure that guys are doing a good job of finishing on the football. We had players in position. It's up to us to go make those plays as a unit. And again, it starts with me. Um, but I do give you know credit to Washington. They did a great job of capitalizing on our mistakes, and then they capitalized with putting seven points on the board. And then I do appreciate Trey Flowers going out there and giving great effort to finish that play to give our defense a chance on that those next couple of downs. But that one play doesn't define our special teams unit and how those guys play. Bradley's been doing a great job this year, along with other players on our special teams units, and we're playing a lot of a lot of guys and it's. It's awesome to see those guys go out there and play. And I'm still a firm believer, and I've always said it before, D-Led, Mike, everybody in there, that we get better with reps. So we're excited for this week, going to Tampa, a, a divisional game where we could be 2-0 in the division. So I want to open up to any questions. Yeah, Coach, with the one uh, created the lane there uh, for uh, Crowder. Just more so our, us and our discipline and lane, lane integrity. So when we get out in coverage, punt is you know it's a harder play because one you start on offense and then you transition to defense. So we start in a compressed formation with the interior guys. You have your gunners outside; those guys can release once the ball's kicked. The interior guys they have to protect first and then go downfield and cover. And then when you're protecting, it might be a holdup. So you got to either stop them from rushing or stop them from trying to block you and defeat those blocks to get out in your lanes. And we have certain lane responsibilities. And if you get yourself in a position where you get too wide or too close to the ball, my bad, uh, you could either lose leverage on the football or you could be too wide. And big returns happen because of lost leverage or missed tackles. So those are opportunities that we got to get better at when it comes to one, getting downfield and capitalizing. And there's it's little things, but those little things can add to big results. We talk about a special teams unit. We want to maximize being detailed in those little things so it could be big results in our favor. Well, if you have little mistakes or little mishaps on special teams, it could lead to big uh, opportunities for the other teams. And then now is it, you're going to give them opportunity to either capitalize off it or not capitalize off of it. So those are things that we have to continue to get better at. And again, there's Couple, couple things that happened that play, little, little things, but it added to a big result, and it gets magnified on special teams because there's usually 40 or more yards being exchanged, D-led on a special teams play. So when that happens and there's a lot of space in open field and you give an opportunity for a returner to get vertical, that's what he should do. So give credit to Washington, Kat, Nate Katzer, their coordinator, and Jameson. He did a hell of a job getting vertical with the football. So credit to those guys. In terms of can I take off return? Do you feel like teams have maybe been not necessarily wanting to even challenge CP, especially with the new rules? I think it's just a combination of both where they don't – CP is the best in NFL history. The stats show it, um, having the most all-time touchdowns in NFL history. And then combination of two, situational football. Hey, if you have a lead, why even put yourself in that position to where you have an explosive returner back there that could change the game or flip the field? And you can see in special teams, field position is critical and it's huge. Going against CP when I was with the Chargers and when I was with the Lions, there was, those were games where CP changed the game based on flipping the field on, a, on one play with explosive return. So now being on this side of it, understanding that he is a weapon for us. He's the first play on offense. So there's going to be times where why even put yourself in that position to kick the ball to that person? You, you look back at the Bears game from last year, it was the third return that he ended up taking for a touchdown. So, if, you know, in my shoes and as a coordinator, if you're going against a dynamic guy, you don't want to – the more opportunities you give a dynamic ball carrier that, that run the football, the more opportunities he has to probably try to flip the field and be an impact player. What exactly can you work on in practice to try to prevent big plays like that punt return? Oh, every day we work open field. We either work open field tackling we work – full coverage and special teams. Uh, Charlotte, correct? Yeah. yeah um, we work open field tackling, special teams. We work our lane integrity. Those are things we work, just like yesterday at practice. Every Wednesday we work punt, and our, we always work particular drills where we're working full cover, and our players understand and have a spatial awareness, okay, what guy's playing outside of me? What guy's playing inside of me? And then also, too, as an individual doing my job, making sure that I'm in a position knowing that Hey, if I'm running to the football and I'm staying to the right side of football, I got to make sure I make this play and stay to the right because all my help is to the left. 
So having that spatial awareness and being able uh, to work those things where we work at Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, jog through, walk through on a Saturday. We work those things each and every day. And the game of football, I, I love the game of football because, yeah, they're, every, nobody's perfect, Charlotte, on the field, but there's, sometimes there's mistakes. And the, the best thing for us, we're in the problem solving business as coaches. So we get the opportunity to go out there and make those corrections and help guys tr push for perfection, push to be more detailed in their fundamentals and their techniques. So those are things we work on. Are our guys perfect? No, but they're pushing for perfection. They're trying to get better each and every day when it comes to their fundamentals and techniques. I'm just curious, with um, the experience Penny had working with Keith Armstrong, or like, I know it was, a, you know, several years ago, but like when he was here, mm -hmm. does that help you know, like, what you're up against at all in preparation? Yes, that always helps when you talk about the mindset of a, of a coordinator and how they go about their philosophy, what's their approach to how they want to cover kicks, how they want to return. You already kind of already have your own beliefs and thoughts of a particular coach when you go against them a couple of times. I believe I've since 2019, I've been going against Coach Armstrong. And my first time going against Coach Armstrong, I was my first year in the NFL, 2016. And I'll give a lot of credit to Coach Armstrong because he's, he's a mentor to me. You know, being the first African-American special teams coordinator winning the Super Bowl and then being the opportunity to speak with him before games and give me great advice. My first game as a coordinator in Detroit, played against Tampa when they beat that year they won the Super Bowl. Um, but going against a guy like him and having you know, Bradley Payton in the building, it is, does help. Also, too, Scotty Miller was there with them as well. So those things help when it comes to the overall philosophy and his approach to what he wants to do. But again, each and every week is a different ball game. And this is not the first time I've went against Coach Armstrong. It's not the first time he's went against me. His guys are going to be ready. He's always going to have wrinkles in his back pocket because you're not going to always show the same looks each and every time you play a certain opponent, especially if it's a divisional opponent. Those guys are going to play hard. I know Keith Armstrong is going to do a great job with those units there. You did something before about how when they're kind of putting together their practice plans, they'll go sometimes day to day and individuals to pick on certain things. Mm -hmm. You get limited period. You know, you know you have certain periods that you get limited periods. Like how far in advance do you kind of plan out what your thought process is going to be with handling certain things? I start on Monday. When we turn the page, after we meet the players on the, the, the game that we just played in that previous Sunday, the day before, um, I start watching film. And as I'm watching film of our opponent, Mike, I'm already formulating my plan for the week with our coaching staff on how we want to attack the week when it comes to you know, Tuesday with any guys that want to come in early meetings and talk about their personnel. Then we, you know, Tuesday, I'm already thinking about, hey, practice schedule for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. What do we want to go through on Saturday for special situations throughout the week? And that's my staff, you know, Coach Baker and Coach Hoffman and myself. We sit down, we go through, and we, we go through all that stuff starting Monday. And then, you know, we move forward Tuesday. Okay, well, what do we want to change? Okay, Wednesday, we have a practice. Going into Wednesday, by the time we go to Wednesday's practice, we're already are done with Thursday's practice plans and what we want to go about. And it's a big collaboration, too, because it's making sure that I'm, we're all on the same page and I get with Coach Smith on you know, how we want to organize practice, what we want to make full speed, jog through, you know, making sure, having awareness as a special teams coach, like, I don't, we're working kickoff cover. Do we want to work at full speed after the guys just ran a bunch on seven on seven? So those are things we got to, you know, kind of organize and put together when it comes to working all six phases on special teams and any special situations. And then making sure that we're maximizing our time. If we have X amount of time, we want to make sure we have quality reps over quantity reps. So you, so you, put, you plan it all out Monday and Tuesday. We'll be like David said, sometimes they'll go day to day and we should be able to do it. So mm -hmm. you're, you look at it more like by Wednesday, you want to go forward. Yeah, I try, I try to, the more organized I am as a coach, the more prepared I can have our players. and. I truly believe like small menu, big understanding, and that allows me to be adaptable. You know, everybody's adaptable in this building. That's from Terry, from start from Mr. Blank, Rich McKay, Beatles, Terry, Coach Smith, and all all of our coaches. We're, it's all about being adaptable. I could have a certain plan in mind for f tomorrow's practice. I may already be done with tomorrow's practice plan, but based on how today's practice goes, I'm always I have the freedom to be able to change it. Be, be adaptable to one our personnel, our players, our coach, 
and how our coach wants to structure that practice. He could change the practice plan for tomorrow, and I got to be adaptable to make sure that we still get what we need to get in for practice tomorrow, Mike, but still be adaptable for how our coaches want it, our head coach wants it done, and what players are available based on the practice and the health of our players. So those are things I, I plan way ahead, but I'm always going to be adaptable based on our players, based on certain schemes. Hey, we may go out there and work a certain kickoff coverage tomorrow, Mike, and or today, and say, hey, we didn't like the way that fit up. Let's emphasize this technique and let's work this. Instead of working a team period, let's work more indie tomorrow. Those are things that we have the adaptability to kind of switch things around to adapt to our players and what we need for that particular week. Anything else for Coach? Uh, what, is, what does Micah Abernathy uh, add to special teams? I know you use him as a protector, um, mm -hmm. but just because he's been signed this week. Yes, well, congrats to Micah. You know, that last week was his first game up. Micah has good speed. He has special teams experience and versatility. I know he hasn't played in a lot of regular season NFL games, but he does provide experience, leadership in that room. Um, he works hard. His work ethic shows, and, and he leads by example with his work ethic. You could, I, I, you could see when he made the tackle on kickoff how many people were excited for him and his journey and what he's been doing. Everybody has their own journey, but it's cool to see him go downfield and make a play inside the 20 on that kickoff the second time we kicked off. But he brings versatility for us. He works hard, um, and that's what you want in a special teams player. We talk about effort, attitude, technique, and we have a lot of guys in our room that, that are proven examples of that, and he's one other guy that's continuing to get better when we talk about effort, attitude, and technique. Yeah, Coach, what are, are some of the um, uh, issues that the uh, remake of Baker Mayfield presents? Man, he's a tough sack. Mm -hmm. The guy is uh, – He's done a great job moving around the pocket, um, staying alive. He's a great play extender. I um, think they've done a really good job. He, you know, he knows where to go with the ball. He's been very decisive. Um, it really helps when you got a good receiving core that uh, gets open. Uh, those guys that played against him for a long time. They're fantastic players. Um, but Baker's done a really good job in their system, moving around, creating, extending, particularly in the red zone. He's, he's, he's done a really nice job extending plays, letting those guys get open, finding them. Um, he's playing at a really high level. It's uh, played him a few times before, and see, this is this is as good as seeing him play. And, and uh, it's very impressive what they've done with him. Um, have you talked to Jesse? Jesse's played him seven times on his Cleveland and Cincinnati mm -hmm. the old Battle of Ohio. Right here. Yeah. Has he been able to um, help you all out? Yeah, of course. I mean, they, they've. Uh, Obviously, have a lot of history and knowledge, uh, you know, of, of Baker and how he plays and everything, and so we've taken into account some of those things. When it comes to Vita Bea, um, in your sort of with your defensive line coach hat on, what kind of problems does he present? Yeah, he's a hard charger. He's a he's a big, powerful man that, you know, when he goes forward, you know, he creates knockback and and uh, new line of scrimmage. Uh, creates a lot of double teams, let those linebackers run over the top and, and downhill and things like that. And so, you know, when you're when you're good up the middle, it, it just it helps everybody on the whole defense. And he is he's a really good football player. He's very technically sound, uses his hands very well. And the thing I don't think he gets enough credit for is his pass rush. You know, he's he's been able to get in the backfield and push the pocket and maybe not the, in terms of, of sacks, but effects and pressures and those type of things. And and so when you look at his Obviously, the crossover tape and everything, and how it, how he's played and, and now and in the past is you know he he's so big and he's so powerful he can get into the backfield and, and cave in a side of the pocket and make the quarterback move to some, some of those other guys. So it really helps out in the run and the pass game. Feels like in a in a game where everybody is a pretty remarkable athlete, those huge guys at defensive tackle who still have that athletic ability are on a totally different level. Do you ever marvel at some of these guys and just the physics of? How that works. Yeah, two times that you really like appreciate it is before and after the game, kind of when you're walking by and you kind of walk by somebody, you're like, man, that that's a big guy, yeah. or he's a, he's tall. I mean, it, 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 the appreciation is, you know, sometimes when you're watching it on film or on TV, you don't really right. uh, feel or be able to stand next to somebody and really feel how big, you know, somebody is like that. And, and when you do, you know, and there's a few guys, and even you know, some of the wideouts, you know, like when you walk by Drake, I mean, he's a 
tall, long. I mean, he's a really good-looking guy that you walk by and like, man, he's a, he's a big receiver. Like, he's a big guy. And so guys like that, and then for them to be able to be as agile and, and as they are, like, it's it's pretty impressive. And so that's – and then after the games, you know, you, you kind of seeing each other and, and you know, because you don't always see them before the games. But if you walk by somebody, it's like, man, that guy's a big guy. Man, it's pretty impressive what he does. Who's the guy that – all your years kind of pitching that, like, you're like, I did not expect that guy to work like that. Like, in, in, in kind of that description that you're Calais. Really? I mean, I knew he was, never had been that close, you know, but knew he was a big person. Like, knew he was really big, right? <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, he walks in and he fills up the whole door, and you're like, yeah, he's he's bigger than you think he is. You know, he's, 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 he's a, and so it's, when he does some of the things that he does, it, it's along the same line. I mean, it's very impressive, and for for him and his career to have 100 sacks and play, you know, end tackle. I mean, he plays all over the line, which I think that's as as impressive, if not more, to play the different positions and tackle. Knows, you know, that that he has played and being able to be that versatile, but also that big and agile. You know, so it's a it's a unique combination. Mm-hmm. You mentioned Glass, but when you guys made some of these signs. Clay, so David, how much do you look at the present versus development? Because a guy like Clay is going to, you know, he's 37, he's going to be who he is, but, you know, at 30, David's the same age. Like, do you look at development versus, like, right now, when you're trying to build this? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like especially on the defensive front. Yeah, well, we're in the development business. You, you know, it's, it's every day that we try to develop our players, whatever aspect. Whatever that may be, and even Clay is, is um, you know, a player that has seen just about everything in the game, um, how it fits in what we're doing as a scheme and defensively, you know, and, and here's how you can have success in this game. So you're still kind of along the same lines of you might have to tweak your your mental or, or physical just a little bit into how we play, um, but it's always about you know develop, 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 and. and even if Calais can get that much better, then we feel like, hey, man, you, you, we, he's done a good job of continuing to grow, you know, on that thing. And, and and so it's always like that. And so even with good players, you're still pushing them to get better. I, I guess what I was saying maybe more with like, those guys are, are older guys versus younger players who maybe you bring along. Is that maybe even somewhere where like what you do pregame with guys like Huggins and right? About like 15 minutes to half hour. Is that kind of where that tries to simulate some of that stuff? Like with you hugging the Harrison, or you doing Taekwon? Yeah, we, we do some some of those things, uh, kind of get going in the, you know, treat game and practice very similar to Megan. So we have an individual in practice right before we go to team periods. And so we kind of try to, to simulate that before we play the game. And that's what that period is. Uh, but it just, you know, the development part is, is it's all players. It, Grady, David, you know, because David can still pass rusher. There's still things that we can develop and keep working on with those guys. And so I think once you become stagnant, oh, they're the player, he is what he, or who he is. I think that's kind of gets stagnant as a coach and maybe you lose a little bit. When it comes to your, to your, to your uh, defensive front, how have you seen them grow throughout the course of, of the, the last couple of weeks? You guys are getting after the. Uh, passer a bit more five sacks last week where have you seen those guys yeah um, really how they're the fundamentals they're having some success with some of the things that we've done and so really the biggest is when you look at our, our run defense up front and getting off blocks and guys using their hands and fundamental technique things that we're doing um, sometimes it takes you know it's year one and sometimes it takes just a few games to get kind of going with it I think if you look at our run defense, the guys, they're in the spots that the linebackers and secondary expect them to be and our fits and everything. But more than that is is how they're playing the block, you know, striking and, and using their hands and playing with the wide base and, and being able to play a gap and a half and those type of things. Um, <clears throat> and so I, that, that's where I've th- seen them, you know, grow. And then, you know, last week with the pass rushes, they, they rushed really well together. Whoever that was out, out on the field is, um, Finally, it came, and, and it does. It, it always happens like that, and, and they really rushed well. Two guys to the left, two guys to the right, 
pushed the quarterback con counter. Bud had a nice counter. Clay's had a nice counter off the block, get a sack, you know, those type of things. And so that's, <clears throat> you're seeing a move and then a counter instead of just one move and then kind of push and things like that. And so I think that's, it's progressed weekly. It's gotten better. It's a, <clears throat> those guys have done a good job affecting the quarterback. Last game, they did a good job of affecting them and getting them down. Coach, could you uh, update us on how Grady and David are playing together? Yeah. What do you think? Um, they don't care what I think. <laughs> 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 they don't care what they think. I think they're doing pretty good, but they, yeah. they care what you think. The, uh, it's really cool. Um, Back in OTAs when we first got together, they had immediate connection. I mean, it was like, you know, and so they work together in practice. And so you're seeing that, you know, they're playing. There's some communication things on the field, you know, when they're standing right next to each other before plays and things like that. But uh, both those guys uh, run and, you know, last game, rushing the passer. You know, Grady's always been a good pass rusher. He's been effective in the run game. But those two guys together, they've, they've come a long way um, together. You know, individually they're very good. Now, I feel like those two guys together, we, you know, they make an impact in the, in the run game. They're, they press the middle of the pocket. They get the quarterback off the spot. You know, we've gotten a few hits uh, from those guys, and you know, Grady got the sack last week. David a couple weeks ago, and so we just uh, impressed with those guys together and and the steps that they've taken, and think that it's only going to get better. That's the exciting thing is I think it's going to continue our practice habits and, and the things and, and that we're doing um, with those guys. I think it's going to continue to grow. And uh, I think we've got still a couple of steps. We can get better at that position, those two positions. But together, they've done a good job and, and uh, look for them to continue to do a job, good job and get a better, be better. And the guys behind them, it's been a you know, Graham, Horn, Huggins, mm -hmm. uh, even London got yeah. some action last week. Uh, how's that, you know, been able to, how's that situation and then been able to rotate them in there and get, get Grady and David a little break? Yeah, so it's a long season first, and so it's good to have a, a group of guys that it's not just one guy and that we're, we've got some young players in the backup positions, you know, next guy, next man up. Um, and so we've just kind of rotated in in certain, you know, certain weeks, a couple guys been up and then, you know, they may need a break and then another, another guy up, you know. And so we'll continue to do that. Um, you might see a different combination than last week, but, you know, maybe not. You know, so every week what we do is it's a, there's a competition in practice for those two spots. And okay. it's how the guys practice. And then we make the decision, um, obviously, with Art at the end of the week. And, um, all right, hey, we'll have this guy up or this guy up and, and uh, take it from there. So uh, in terms of, like, a theme competition, the fact that Taquan has been inactive the last two weeks, does that mean that, and I asked Jerry about this yesterday, is, is the practice portion of that part of the issue there? Or? Well, it's really not an issue. I mean, because we've got other guys that can play the position too. And so we, are, we think everybody has a starter. That's just how it is. And so with a group of two, three, four guys, five guys, because you've seen four or five different guys out there at nose and tackle. Um, Sometimes guys have a better week. You just have a feel. All right, hey, this guy's ready to go, or maybe this guy's ready to go the other week. And so that's kind of. And then we we'll, we we'll always evaluate every rep. You know how they're doing in the walkthroughs, and are they doing the right things? And so everything is evaluated. It's not just hey, five reps. Hey, where this guy's going to play? It's a it's a whole body of work through the week. And then also too, part of that, all right, is the matchup. Who do we like up this week? Who do we like up this week? You know, so that that plays into. Whoever's is up, whoever is up at that, those positions. We were just talking about Kuda and just kind of getting back. Mm -hmm. What has he done in the last month that's maybe impressed you or surprised you? Yeah, how quickly he's come back from that time off. I mean, seven weeks off, and then all of a sudden he's out there. He's starting. He's making plays. Uh, he drove on that ball last week and broke it up. That was really impressive, the drive, the break. I mean, those are some of the things that he was doing in practice. And it was great to see him make that play. Um, he's done some other good things, you know. But that play stands out. It's like <clears throat> he was off. He, he was, he was, he drove. I mean, he had conviction. He drove, broke on the ball, knocked it out. And, you, man, all right, you saw that in practice. And you're like, okay, now let's just keep, keep progressing with that more during the game. But 
that play was that was like man gosh he's back quick that was the first thing man he's making that play and he was just out a couple weeks ago so that was like and so even this week even he practiced better yesterday and so his you know he made a few plays his confidence is growing getting back to you know you got to play the game the confidence and things like that make some plays in practice and uh, that play was really impressive yeah, he had some injuries in his career. He's been up and down. It was up and down for him. So is this maybe the best you've seen him play? Because I guess you watched enough film with him before. Sure. Like, is, is he playing at a different level you think than maybe he was at his healthiest? I do. I, I do. I think Jerry and, and Jack have done a great job with him. Um, they've put a lot of time. Um, he comes up. He's always talking, the communication with them. And, and those guys have such a great knowledge of the, the game and the position and, and how to be in the right spots and the fundamentals and technique. And so really attribute that to those two coaches, like really helping them and take the next step in his game. Um, but then also Jeff, is a, he's a willing worker. Like he is always trying to get better uh, communication. He's early on the practice field. He stays late. He's always working to, to, to get better. And that, that combination is it's really cool to see. And that's, I think that's what you're seeing on the field. I wonder what it was like from your perspective watching Calais get that hundred sack, and how did you sort of celebrate that moment while obviously still being locked in for the game? Yeah, it was really cool, wasn't it? Like, um, so at first it was, uh, the, you know, we're thinking, all right, okay, we got to get off the field, get the ball, but, and then all of a sudden it was like, you know what, this is something that you're not going to be around very much, and so you had to just kind of take yourself out of the the game and just appreciate the body of work, that particular moment, and just the elation for, for Calais, and just being so happy for it. Like he, that's such a great accomplishment, and the guy's a Hall of Famer. I mean, you're not gonna be around that many Hall of Famers in your, in your career, you know, and so you wanna be, but it just doesn't happen, you know, and, and so he comes off the field, and he's, he's the guys are high-fiving him, and, and really, the thing that, was really cool to see is our players' reaction. You know, they're and and they were all jumping and they were so excited for him. And that at that moment is, you know, we have we have such a great team. Our our team was so happy for for Calais that that, you know, offense, defense, especially I mean every the coaches, everybody was just so happy. It, it it's just a credit to our football team. Like that that had a part to do with it. But really Calais, what accomplishment and and uh very happy and, and excited for him, and that's just you can't take that away from him. And that's it's it's unbelievable. It's really special. Um, it was such a great moment. It was really cool, um, and how he did it, and the whole the dance and all that stuff. You know, like he was, and I'm not into all that, but at the, you know you get a hundred. <laughs> that's it's pretty cool. So it was it was awesome. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Absolutely. You said you're not you know, I didn't know if it was like kind of sore subject. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just, you know, that, yeah, I do remember that. It was awesome. It was, it was really cool. He's been, he, uh, we had a cool moment uh, defensively. He kind of spoke, stood up, just kind of talked just a little bit about his, his uh, journey and all that with the guys. And um, it was, it, that was really cool defensively. That's on, um, on Monday, the meeting. And just kind of the, all the things that he's done and, and you got to listen to kind of just a little bit, five minutes of you know, in, his, in his long career. But some of the things that he said is he's right on, you know, just about hard work and uh, perseverance and taking care of yourself and how to be a pro. Like that was really cool to hear him. Uh, and so now, you know, he has that mindset. And now you're like, okay, now I totally get why and how he got to where he got, which was, that was cool. It was awesome for the guys to hear and see that. So. Cool. Appreciate Thank you guys. You guys. All right. Thank you.